Okay, uh, let me do that introduction again. Happy Friday. Welcome to Friday, April 24th. Uh, today we're going to discuss the financing behind your mergers, acquisitions, and spinoffs. What they look like to make it happen, and then what those finances might look like after it happens. That is super important also, especially for investors. Uh, so, before we do that, there's a couple key phrases you guys have to know. Some of you may already know them. Uh, if you've done a lot of your own stock and investing research, some of you know them from being in the finance department or from discussions we've had in class. So, market cap versus ass <clears throat> assets. All right. Market cap and assets. What do you got? Somebody give me market cap. Actually, give me assets first. That's the easiest one. Somebody give me assets. What are assets? Or when I say market cap versus assets, what do you think we're addressing here? So like assets would be like the critical value of a company. So it could be found on a company's balance sheet. And it's just basically a combination of everything that, that, that the particular business owns. Yeah. So it's all, how do we say this? It's all the good stuff. It's your, well, give me some examples. So one would be cash. I'm going to give you cash as the easiest one. Right? So it's like the critical as everything that the company has of worth, of value. So we're not talking debt. Debt is your liabilities. We're not talking debt. We're talking what is your worth? So revenue goes into that, but revenue is over a period of time. So we're talking today. What is your worth today? All right. So I'm going to say cash is one. So give me a second. Let me write this stuff down. Okay. So assets, we got cash. What else? Equipment. All right. Hold on. We got cash. Somebody else now. So Newman gave us equipment. Property. All right. Hold on. So who's got equipment worth value? What company has like a serious boatload of equipment? Uh, like a hardware company? Like? GM. GM, General, 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 GE, GM, Ford, Tesla, right? Any manufacturer, Apple, Apple has a, sh uh, oops, a boatload of money, um, but they have like hundreds of thousands of iPhones and iPads in warehouses also. That has value. So that's an asset. So equipment, property. So property would be if you own a building. Right, so we talked about WeWork, right? WeWork owned buildings that they couldn't rent out. So they had assets that were actually bad assets because the, 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 um, the real estate market is now struggling big time, but you also couldn't find enough tenants to fill up all the spaces they had. But property is usually considered under your asset. So cash, property, equipment, what else? Inventory. Uh, inventory, I would, okay. So equipment then would be what you use to build the car and inventory would be extra cars, right? Frank, we will get to stocks in a minute. Your, your, you're talking like in like um, stocks on the market, right? That's not that's not necessarily considered under your asset class. Um, we'll discuss that in a minute. All right, we'll discuss that in a second. Um, no chick stock. I don't know what that means, William. Yeah, that was a bad joke. William, you're gonna have to start drinking your coffee a little earlier in the morning. All right. <laughs> um, Frank, give me another one, though. So imagine new apps, right? Imagine your business you guys run. You guys have cash. You have computers. You have the building you operated in. You have – you don't have inventory, so it wouldn't count for your business. What else? Furniture. Like, yeah. like, oh. So anything in your building with value. So furniture, good. So Adrian said investments. So Frank, I'm not sure if you meant investments or stocks. So like Google 
is part owner of multiple businesses. PayPal is bar, part owner of multiple businesses, right? So investments in other companies is an asset. Okay. Uh, but stock, your own business stock would not be considered an asset. Um, anything else you guys can think of? Intellectual property. So like, yeah, so that's what I was waiting for. So it's called an IP. Intellectual property. Uh, at an, so what would somebody else, what's an IP? Can you give me an example of an IP? And that would be um, the industry term. Mickey Mouse? Uh, okay. So Mickey Mouse is the intellectual property of what company? Yes, the Walt Disney Company. The Walt Disney Company owns Mickey Mouse. How about this? Spider-Man. Mm, yeah, you guys are torn on that one. Spider-Man is Sony. Really? Spider-Man is Sony. Um, so here's what we talked. So we talked about Nintendo a little bit yesterday, right? Nintendo has a whole bunch of IPs. Marvel is owned by Disney. However, Sony lended out Spider-Man to the Marvel Universe for the Marvel movies. Spider-Man is still owned by Sony. All right. Uh, so, into, so let's say you're starting a business, though. Um, so Google is developing a new product, a new way to swipe on your phone, right? They own the patent, right? That would be an intellectual property. So the intellectual property doesn't have to be a thing like Mickey Mouse or, or your Spider-Man or your Marvel franchise um, or your Superman logo. Yeah, it doesn't just have to be copyrights and trademarks and things like that. Your IP can be an idea. Like Peloton's idea of how they link. Well, let's talk about PayPal again, because I, I love them and they're doing epically dope this week. It's almost back at all time highs. Ch ching, ch ching, ch chang. Um, but let's take a look at PayPal. So the process of transferring money to people. If they do it through a very proprietary way where it's their unique strategy and style and this technology that is uh, protected, no one else can create that process because PayPal owns it, right? So for you to use that type of process, you would actually have to probably pay PayPal to be allowed to use that. So let's say Zelle. How many of you guys have Zelle? Type a Z if you have Zelle. Type a P if you have PayPal or Venmo. All right, we got P's and Z's, P's and Z's. Well, let's say that PayPal and Venmo, because PayPal acquired Venmo like four years ago. So let's say that PayPal, now with Venmo, had this really cool, unique way of transferring money very quickly. And Zelle had this really long, obnoxious way of doing it. And Zelle wanted to exist made by the banks. And PayPal said, yeah, you know what? Fine, we'll help you. But you have to pay us 1% of every transaction. That's an intellectual property. Let Zelle use your technology, but charge Zelle. Okay, so these are all your assets. These all equal up to a dollar sign. And we'll just be honest. All of this equals a dollar sign. So imagine liquidating your business. This is all of the stuff you would have to liquidate. Now, market cap. What is that? That's a new term for most of you. Market cap is not the total value of all your assets. Okay? That is not market cap. There's anybody outside of like the Newmans and Tylers of the world who talk a lot, which I appreciate. 
but who comment a lot here and the Adrians. Can I get a Brian or an Aaron that tell me what is market cap? Because most of you guys are doing public companies. All right, so Vincent actually typed it. Um, it is total value of all shares of the business. Okay, so here's the issue. How many of you guys are not doing, oh my gosh, who was the company? Who? Somebody asked me about Bubble Tea. Was it somebody in New Apps that asked me about Bubble Tea? The Bubble Tea company? Kathy, yes. Kathy, are you still trying to plan to use them? No, okay. Um, so here's the thing. You know, you guys going through the process. How many of you guys, if, you, if both of your companies are publicly traded on the stock market, just put a smiley face in the chat window so I can see publicly traded on the stock market both of them oh looks like everybody damn a lot of times acquisitions are made by companies that are not public because it's easier you don't have to worry about investors you worry about you worry about like one or two owners right you they're probably they probably don't have as much value uh, so it's probably easier to buy them so a lot of businesses will buy smaller businesses that are not public. You guys, most of your project seems like most of you guys are doing acquisitions between um, two public companies. So that's going to be extremely important. Okay. So are we good on market cap? So market cap is not all of the cash, property, inventory, furniture, investments, and IPs of Apple. These are just the assets of Apple. This does not determine the market cap. Okay? This stuff could determine if the stock goes up or down. But the stock going up and down increases or decreases the value of shares. Right? So Apple could be worth... Let's say liquid, completely liquid, all of this equals $217 billion for Apple. Does that make sense? This could be everything they own, all of their assets. Are we on the same page with that? Type a Y yeah. if you feel me. Or say it in the, the thing. Good. Now check this out. Apple reports earnings next week. Full disclosure, I have Apple calls into next week. Let's see what happens. Might sell them today if it goes up because I'm kind of scared. Irrelevant conversation. But let's say next week, Apple announces they have another $30 billion in cash. So that means it's now worth $247 billion. But the stock goes from $275 to $290. Even though their assets only increased by $30 billion. Their stock increased by $15, which probably moved the company from like $1.2 trillion in market cap to $1.3 trillion in market cap. So they added $30 billion, but added $100 billion in their market cap because the stock went up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let's go the opposite route. Who needs me to try to rephrase that another way? Because this is super important in your, in your presentation. Miku, thank you. Appreciate that. So, and I love the honesty. So, so Chris, unmute if you can, and tell me what part of this just throws you off. Are you clear on the asset part? Total net worth of Apple. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm confused on the market cap. Good. Market cap is easy because we can do that right now. So let's go over here. And I'll go AAPL as their stock symbol. We'll pull up uh, Yahoo Finance. All right. 
Oh man, it's barely up pre market. That sucks. I'm stressed out right now, guys. My heart rate is up. So we can look at the summary of um, the business. And if we look, we see they have a market cap of $1.2 trillion. So this is where I need you to, to, to stick with me, okay? All of the stocks that exist for Apple go up and down often right? If Apple does good, the stock goes up, people buy more. If Apple looks like they're doing bad, the stock goes down. That changes the market capitalization of the company, the market cap of the business. So if your assets go up or down, let's say Apple beats earnings and they have more cash. Chris, as an investor, does that make you excited? Yeah. Yes. The stock goes, so right now, at $276.10, Apple is worth $1.2 trillion. Do you see that? Can we agree on that? Yeah. Okay, so that's right here for everybody, all you home gamers outside. There's your market cap. <clears throat> If Apple has more assets because they had a good quarter, right? This stock goes from 276 to 288. That means their market cap goes from 1.2 trillion to 1.3 trillion. I'm just picking a random mathematical number, but it might not be 1.3 on the nose. That is your market cap. And that's how your market cap changes based on what the stock does. All right. Ask me a question. Don't just say, all right, ask me one question. Even if you get it, ask me one question. Or am I that good? Um, I thought you said that. So if there's more assets, that means that um, consumer confidence increases. Well, you tell me. You're the consumer, right? And that would kind of be that would be more like investor confidence, right? So if you own Apple, and Apple has more cash because they made a lot of sales, well, their asset value goes up, which means you get excited about Apple. If you get excited about Apple as an investor, what do you do to the stock? You probably buy some. And then it's supply and demand. If there's more demand for the stock, the price of the stock goes up. If the price of the stock goes up, the total market cap of the business goes up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Frank, good question. Uh, Dylan first. What happens to assets if the MC goes down? So absolutely nothing, Dylan. Just because Apple stock goes up or down does not change their assets. It's almost like two completely separate things. Here's the assets, and, and pardon my writing. There's your assets, and here's your market cap. Well, if assets go up or down, it doesn't necessarily mean anything about the stock. But it's not, how do I say this? This is a relationship, but one doesn't directly impact the other. It indirectly impacts the other. Why? Because there's an investor right here in the middle that buys or sells stocks. So Dylan's question, if assets go down, if assets go down, a lot of times, so will your market cap, just because investors aren't um, confident. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Frank's question. Is it possible for a company to have higher asset value than market cap? 
I would assume yes. Can I give you a direct example right now? No, because remember, these act kind of independent of one another. They do impact each other, but they are fully independent. So let's say Apple, something crazy happens and like Apple phones start exploding like the Samsung phones. And Apple stock goes from like 1.2 trillion to 200 billion, right? Well, guess what? The market cap is now lower than the amount of cash that they have. Because remember, the market cap, that's the, that's the worth of all the stocks. So if they're selling the stock, driving the price of the stock down, driving the market cap of the company down, I believe it would be extremely possible and, and likely in some situations that you could have a lower market cap than actual value of the business. If, if, if investors don't want the stock, then yeah, I would definitely say that, Frank. Wait, wouldn't that mostly happen with value-based stock, stocks? Well, because like Ford, I would tell you this, Ford, Ford might have a lower market cap than all its assets, but then they might have a boatload of liabilities. Like they have so many cars and manufacturing plants and machinery. They could have billions of dollars worth of, of, of investments and assets, but maybe their market cap is lower than that. Well, here's the problem. <clears throat> if this is just talking assets, what if Ford has a whole lot of liabilities? If Ford has a whole lot of liabilities, well, now we know why the market cap is so low because the assets don't matter if you have a lot of liabilities. Yeah. All right. Um, so um, there's a lot of information on the screen. Um, Vincent asked a question. Market cap is what the market values. Of, yes. So your market cap is basically where the stock market values the business. This is where the stock market values the business. And where the stock market values the business is sometimes different. It varies a lot. So here's my question. When you guys are doing your mergers and acquisitions, I'm going to delete this and you guys have access to the, you know, um, recording if you need it. Um, when you guys are buying a business, so who's got two, can somebody give me your two public companies or better yet, let me do let, let Let's stick with the apples and Disney's of the world. Just because you know what? It's fun to have a crazy, let's have a crazier conversation. Apple and Tesla, because this is always the crazy conversation. All right. So we got an Apple Tesla thing going here. So check this out. The market cap of Tesla is 130 billion. Can we agree on that? We're looking at it. There's the chart. Based on yesterday, it was $732 per share. Market cap of 130 billion. If you're with me, say yeah. 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 Uh, Newman, that was like a really wack, yeah. Yeah. It's too early. About like, yay, yay. Not too much. Okay. So, but, so my question to you guys, so William, Adrian, Katie, when you do your acquisition, when you do your acquisition, are you going to use assets or market cap? So looking at, Tesla's financials, okay? We're looking at balance sheet. And total assets, great. They have 34 billion in total assets because this is in thousands. So please, please, please do not screw up your assignment by not reading eyeballs right here all numbers are in thousands so this isn't 34 million it's 34 billion they have 30 billion in assets and a market cap of 130 billion 
Well, which number are you going to use to purchase the business? If you're Apple, you're Apple right now, right? Which number are you using to purchase Tesla? Are you using market cap or are you using their total assets? It would be closer to the total assets. A little inflated, but more and more leaning towards the total asset. 100% incorrect. It would be their market cap. Because let me ask you guys a question, all right? Newman, do you like the Tesla? Well, Newman, would you would you own Tesla, the stock? Uh, no. That means no. That, that, means, that means hell no. Vincent, do you currently or would you own Tesla? Yeah, William loves Tesla, okay? William's a Tesla junkie. He's got it hooked up to his veins. No? William, you're short Tesla? Never mind. Okay, so Frank. I love Frank. Frank's, Frank's all in on Tesla. Let's talk with Frank. So Frank owns Tesla, and Tesla is currently worth $100 billion at $732 per share. Frank, if Apple said we want to buy your company, Tesla, that you own, what share price do you think they need to buy Tesla at for you to be happy? Um, well, I don't want to sell it because it's my own company, right? Well, that's, so here's the thing. So let's say, so public companies like this, and this is why your project is so important, guys. Public companies like this, you vote. You vote. Oh, here, hold on. Wait, where's my paper? Because I'm involved in a lawsuit right now. Hold on. Let me show you. I got a cut off on, so don't judge me. I don't... I don't dress up with a shirt and tie anymore for, for teaching at home. I think that's – all right. I don't even know where my camera is right now. You guys can see me? Yeah. All right. I'll assume that you guys can see me. Let me see the video panel. No idea where it is. Oh, there it is. All right. Great. So this is the lawsuit I'm involved in. Okay, let me find you the name of the company. Proof of claim, and let me tell you why. I was a shareholder in this company, and I don't have my curtain up, so don't judge the rest of my home. Good. Can you guys read that? First Solar, it's backwards, I know. First Solar. So that business, yeah. First Solar is a solar company. I'm now involved in a lawsuit because I owned the stock and their management team did some shady stuff. So the stock dropped drastically. So anyone who owned the stock between a certain time period is involved in a class action lawsuit if you owned it between 2008 and 2012, I owned it. So I'm involved in a class action lawsuit against the management team and against the actual company as an investor. So as an investor, because they misled investors. So here's what happens. As an investor, you own part of the business, which means you vote on decisions. So Frank said, it's my business. Why would I sell it, right? Well, imagine Apple comes in and says, Tesla's currently worth, I'm just going to stop my video. Tesla's currently worth $732 per share, right? Well, what if Apple said, hey, I'm going to offer you $900 per share. You know what? I'm going to offer you $1,000 per share. That's 25% higher than where it is today. So today, Frank, I can guarantee you 25% more money if you sell your company to me today would you sell tesla or would you still think that tesla is going to be worth more than a thousand dollars sometime soon um well i don't think i'll sell it oh okay and, and um can apple just like forcefully like just buy it 
Okay. So if they own 50 more, 50%, yep. then can they control? Yes, we're going to get to that right now. So um, before we do that, what I do want to make clear is, yes, and um, William, I had, uh, I had luck and coffee calls when, uh, when that whole fiasco went down. And now they're still halted. Go figure. So um, not a lot, thank God. It was only a few hundred dollars. So here's the thing. So Newman, you said assets, right? If their assets are worth thirty four if their assets are worth thirty four billion and the stock is currently worth one hundred and thirty billion, that means this stock price really should be like two hundred dollars then right because a two hundred dollars per share would get you closer to the total assets that they're worth thirty four billion. So, like in this case, like, are you inferring the, the idea that like the the market cap is inflated? Well, what I'm inferring is that I do believe their market cap is way too inflated. However, what I'm also making sure you guys understand is assets is not what you use when you're buying a company. You are also paying like Beats Beats by Dre was literally worth like a few hundred million and and apple paid over a billion dollars for it why you paid for the brand name you paid for the 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 people in the, to, to 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 be yeah, a part you have of it. To, go ahead you have to pay for the intrinsic value like things exactly. that you can't necessarily put a value on you can't put a value on it so this is the dollar value of all the assets of tesla yes but if you're buying tesla you have to pay at minimum their current market cap. And my question to Frank is, what would it take you to sell Tesla to me? Tesla's 130 billion right now today. What would it take you to sell it to me? 150 billion, 200 billion, 250 billion? What would it, there's a, there's a price tag on everything, guys. There's a price tag on everything. Some of you might sell your own mother for a certain amount of money. <laughs> listen if it's a big enough number I'd be like mom listen sorry this is how the way things roll so Frank you want 500 billion hell no I wouldn't do it if I'm Apple it's not worth it it would take me a decade to make 500 billion dollars on owning Tesla I would never make more money all right so normally, normally, and for your project, if you're doing an acquisition, then what's happening is you have to acquire them and convince the shareholders like me to say yes. If you're going to convince me to say yes, you better pay more than $732 a share, which means you have to pay more than $130 billion. Does that make sense? Wait. Yeah, that makes sense. Tyler, I actually have a question. So, like, if the company isn't public, publicly traded, how would that how would that happen then? So, if the company is not publicly traded, you would take a look at their assets and liabilities, and then you would just negotiate a number. Oh, okay. So that would be more towards the total liability. Well, yeah, total assets. Total assets, but with liabilities. You can have a lot of assets. You can, imagine having thirty-four billion dollars in assets, but you have fifty billion dollars in loans and 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 bonds. Well, that means you actually have okay. negative. You have negative fourteen billion dollars. Yeah, because so, everything would serve as collateral. Yeah. So, if it's not publicly traded, guys, then what would happen is it would be a much deeper discussion and conversation about what is the true, like you said, financial value, which is assets and liabilities. Okay, so there's total liabilities, 26 billion. All right. Then we have to put a price tag on intrinsic value. So the brand of Tesla, right? Let's say Tesla wasn't public and none of this was real, right? Let's say they didn't have a stock. The company literally had 34 billion in assets, 26 billion in liabilities. So it literally has 8 billion in positive assets. 
But then you have to put a price tag on Elon Musk. You have to put a price tag on the Tesla name because maybe that name is worth something, right? Maybe that name is going to get you some money. Maybe that name is going to be what adds value to Apple. Does that make sense? And how, like, how about now, like, like, in, like in the midst of the virus, what would happen in that, in like that sense where a business is saying that, okay, we understand our stock is doing this right now, but without this virus, here's how the business is really valued. Okay, good. So good question. So United Airlines, six months ago, six months ago, United Airlines was sitting at, I don't know why this isn't loading. Six months ago, United Airlines was at $88 a share. Today, it's at $26 a share. Today, the market cap is $6.4 billion. So if it's at $25, $26 a share, and it was at $88, let's figure 25 times three, uh, 25 times three, you're looking at six, twelve. It was probably about a $20 billion company. Now it's worth $7 billion. Like you can have another company come in and just buy them. Literally wait mm -hmm. until the company sells off and has something terrible happen and buy the whole business. If you were to tell American airlines today, Hey, listen, I'll give you 15 billion for your business. They'll probably sell it simply because to get back to $88 a share in what's going on in the market and economy today, Jesus Christ, you know how long it's going to take? I don't want to own that crap. I would sell my company. Hell yeah. There's too much risk out there. And I got a boatload of debt. So get me the hell out. Sell my business. That's what a lot of people do. So, and as an investor, you look for that. You, it's like bottom picking. You look for the weak. Well, there are companies now that are weak. So I wouldn't be shocked if you see mergers and acquisitions, which is exactly why we're doing the project right now mergers and acquisitions. So you're going to have to do a couple things. And I know I'm already like almost over time because you know, you guys are great. We have some great uh, discussions. I, this is why VE is two hours long because we literally can't do much in 44 minutes. So number two is how are you going to do it? So most of you guys are doing an acquisition, which means you have to decide, right? How are you going to finance this? So how much cash Looking at the balance sheet, how much cash does Apple have? Well, if we looked at their balance sheet in financials, come on. I'm on my old laptop. That's why it's so damn slow. So I'm going to go through total revenue. I don't care about profit, blah, 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 blah. Where is. Oh, I'm on the income statement. Let's go to the balance sheet. All right. Total cash. Apple has $100 billion in cash. Short-term investments they can liquidate. And 48 in actual cash, like in your mattress. Dollars, greenery. All right? So they can liquidate this whatever these short-term investments are, and they got about $101 billion in cash. They can, guys, they can buy American Airlines with like $15 billion and still have $85 billion to wipe their butt with in cash. Now, they might want to use that cash. So what would they do? They would do a combination of maybe they have debt, right? So... I, as an Apple investor, I love that they have $100 billion in cash. Why? United Airlines doesn't have cash. They're struggling. Ford doesn't have cash. They're struggling. Okay. Chipotle, guess what? Their stock is doing great, but they don't have cash either. Google has cash. Amazon has cash. PayPal has cash. Visa has cash. I love businesses with cash because God forbid something bad happens in the world. They got money. Right? Just like I tell you guys, you have to have money in your savings account. They've got money stashed. 
So I don't know if I want, if I want to use all my cash. Right, Vince, a rainy day fund. If that makes sense not to use all your cash, just type hell yeah in the chat. If you think they should use their cash, right, use it all. <clears throat> hell yeah. All right, good. Thanks, guys. So, but again, Cash is burning. Ca keeping cash is burning. You're right. You're right. However, it's also bad just to have no cash. So that's a different philosophical argument we could have, William. So your, your attempt here, because I don't know the balance sheet of all the businesses you guys are looking to acquire or merge with or be the, mer the, the acquirer. You might have to go into their liabilities and you might have to look at the corporate debt website we had used a few weeks ago where you were looking to find out what is some of the corporate debt some of these businesses have. What if I told you this? Apple can use $20 billion to buy United Airlines or Apple could take out a loan at 0.5% to buy United Airlines at 0.5% and then use that cash to do something to to do something else and earn like 5% profit. Well, wouldn't you want to do the loan cuz it's 0.5%? Hell yeah, take the loan. So, you guys have to make this argument for me. So, is it cash debt or equity? Or a combination? Maybe you do some cash and some debt. Now, William, is it leveraging? Hold on now. I don't know your company's situation. If you are Alphabet, how much debt do you have? It's only leveraged if you have over, if you were to have a crap load of debt. Like me, I can take out a $500,000 loan to buy a house today. I'm not leveraged. I don't have any other debt. Just because I'm taking out a loan in a bad economy doesn't mean anything. But if I took out a car loan and then I bought a house, I wouldn't consider that leveraged either because the car loan is still small. However, if I took out a car loan, a $500,000 mortgage loan, and then I took out a $200,000 loan to buy a condo in Ecuador, well, now I'm pretty leveraged. Does that make sense? So you want to be careful of leveraging your company too far because look, Amazon's a sexy investment right now, but imagine they really, they bought a business with, with all this debt that would scare investors because then your balance sheet isn't sexy. You guys need a sexy balance sheet. That should be the title of the assignment today. Sexy balance sheets. You want to keep this balance sheet pretty. You don't want it to look like a pig with lipstick. That's what you should call the assignment. Pigs with lipstick. All right. If you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. All right, so you want this balance sheet to be sexy. Now, here's the issue with Apple. What is the date of this balance sheet? I mean, come on, you guys can read. I can, you can say September 2019. Guys, a lot has happened for Apple since then. They've sold a lot more iPhones since then. So we might have to have you guys do a little more research and try to find a more recent balance sheet for your businesses. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go through this more on Monday. Um, so here's what I want to do right now, because I know we only have two minutes left and I'll stay as long as I want. If you guys have another class, go and just watch from like this mark on if you want to. So for an acquisition, cash or debt, I think is easy for you guys to understand. Okay. Equity, would be if you want to issue more shares. Now, if you issue more shares, you're kind of, imagine there's a hundred million shares that exist. Imagine there's a hundred million shares that exist. And to buy this company, Apple is worth, Apple is worth two, let's say Apple's worth 280 today and you wanna buy this other company for $10 million. 
guys, how many shares do I need to give them to equal $10 million? So do 10 million divided by 280. Somebody do that math and give me the number. So it's $280 a share. I want to buy the company for a hundred million. How many shares? Okay, so 300, nope, 35, so 35,700 new shares. Now, if we do this, okay, now pay attention because I need you to make this argument, guys. I know, like, I get excited because I'm like a super loser nerd. For you guys, if you can like really comprehend this, then you, the conversations you have in the real world, one, are going to be drastically different. But two, I guarantee your position in whatever jobs you get in the future, you will get promoted faster because you understand like the, the, the crazy idiosyncrasies involved in these decisions. Now, I need you to pay attention closely. If Apple right now has 100 million shares, okay? And you need to buy a company for $10 million, okay? You would, in equity, you would have to issue 35,000 700, 714 new shares. Here's what that does for me, ready? If I own 1% of Apple and they're issuing 35,000 new shares, I don't own 1% of Apple anymore. How much Apple do I own? You own less. 0.9998% of Apple because they just issued brand new shares. It lowers my value because they created new shares out of thin air. They pulled them out of their butt. Now, it doesn't require debt. Great. It doesn't require using cash. Great. As an investor, would this piss you off? If this would piss you off, say, just put a number one. So, Leland, you asked what? United Airlines did the other day. They sold extra equity. That's why United Airlines was down in the beginning of the week. They pulled new shares of United Airlines out of their butt because they needed more money. So they sold more equity. Now, here's my question. Ready? Now, this is an important question. If Apple was buying, let's say, Beats again. Let's use Beats again. Apple's buying Beats for 35,000 shares, and it brings my share price to 0.998%. If I'm an investor, yes, I want Apple to keep their cash. No, I don't want Apple to have any more debt. So I might like the equity idea. Why might I like the equity idea? Because if I think the Beats acquisition is gonna be a hella great acquisition, then you know what? Do it. Keep your cash. Don't take on new debt. Give them new shares. Yeah, I'm going to be pissed off. It lowers my total ownership. But if it brings Apple stock from 280 to 330 because you bought Beats over the next few years, then I have no problem with you lowering my ownership and giving them shares because Apple keeps all their cash for a rainy day just in case. They don't take on new debt. And as an investor, I hate it, but if I do truly believe in this acquisition, I would vote to do equity. Now, if you told me it did, my 1% became 0.7%, well, I'm not as happy anymore. You just dropped my value by like 30%. Does that make sense? Whew. That was a lot. Okay, so. Yeah, Dylan, so I'm still making the same amount of money if the stock goes up or down. Uh, but the issue is since there's more shares, 
remember, you're doing supply and demand, Dylan. So supply and demand says for Apple to go up 5%, more shares have to be in demand because you issued more shares. So it's supply and demand. So once you issue more shares, there's more shares out there, which means for the stock to move, more of that stock has to actually be bought or sold. Does that make sense? I still own the same number of shares, but my percentage is lower. Woof. Guys, this, I, 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 mean, I mean, I don't know about you. I thought that was a great lesson. But I do want to cover one more thing with you. And I know you guys got to go. So you guys can just go and, and, and tune in like it's, you know, Disney later. You know, Disney plus me on TV. Number three is easy. Consumers aren't happy. This is all about synergies and products. This is all about new product offerings and office locations and the consumer. The Department of Justice, number four, blocks it. Number five, the investors start selling the stock. Well, if I'm Apple and I'm paying for them in equity, if you're doing equity, assume that investors don't like that and just make the argument. Okay? Make that argument for me. Now, the last thing is this part, which is create a new financial document. If you were to do this, right? If you were to actually build your business and you were trying to actually sell your business, you would no longer have a balance sheet. Your balance sheet would now actually merge with this balance sheet. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So what I want you guys to do here is if it's an acquisition, I need you to take one balance sheet and merge it with the other balance sheet. Assets, liabilities, everything. Because now this is one company. It's no longer two businesses. Does that make sense? If it is a merger, same thing. You're merging the balance sheet. If it is a spinoff, which no one's doing, you would have to pull things out of that balance sheet. So what is what did eBay give to PayPal when they had a spinoff? Right? That would be the question. Cash, uh, a building, right? What liabilities did, did PayPal keep? Right? What loans did they keep? That's number six. Is literally on the slide, you can actually just do the, the original balance sheet, the uh, uh, second balance sheet for the other business, and then the new balance sheet, just like that. It's math. You literally, Adrian, add everything. Because we still have to make a decision, did Apple acquiring Tesla make Apple's balance sheet sexier? If it didn't, that is a scary thing. If it made it prettier, then maybe Apple got away with something. Now Apple got a better, a good balance sheet still, and they got the name Tesla. That's pretty damn good. Feel me? Hell yeah, Tina, you got to do debt. You can't just do the good stuff. You have to do the bad stuff. Your balance sheet is exactly what um, Yahoo Finance has. But Yahoo Finance is just older, right? It's just not new. So you have to actually do all of this. Assets, liabilities, receivables, inventory. Just give me addition. So let me ask you this. Today is Friday the 24th. I have no, pro I already extended this to May 1st. What if I extended this another day? Do you think this is going to take you, how much work are other classes giving you guys? Like, is it a lot? Do you need, now, William, I know you said you started on it. You know, some of you guys are doing research. I can extend this from May 1st 
AP Psych. It's good. Teachers don't know. Teachers don't know how much work they're giving. Educators have no idea. So this would literally give you one week. I can give you till May 4th if you need it. But again, it's got to be a need. So is this a need or can you guys pull this off? May 1st, yeah, I, I agree May 1st is fair. It gives you a week. You probably should have already started it. William, you, you said you finished, but now you're going to start tweaking. That's great. So May 1st is Friday. How about this? Let's make it Sunday, May 3rd. That way, Friday, May 1st, maybe some of you guys that are done can show it to the class. And then we can give a, an early critique. All right? How's that sound? All right, that way, I mean, I'm not trying to catch you guys and be like, ha-ha, lower grade, ha-ha-ha. You know, so let's do that. We'll extend it to Sunday, um, May 3rd. And then next week, maybe like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will do all critiques. And you guys can like maybe show what you got. And then we can fine tune a lot of these things. This is a really important assignment for me because – you have to think about as the consumer, you have to think about being an investor. And then you also have to think about, let's be honest, the financial piece of it. This is cumulatively like everything you've been doing all year. So I do want to make sure that you guys are comfortable and not just doing this because it's a project. I want you to be able to dive into this, like for real, for real. Okay. Um, so I will extend it to May 1st. And let's see how next week goes. All right? You guys have my number. Please reach out to me if you need anything. Does anybody have a question before I let you dip? Because I need to go eat breakfast and finish this coffee and take my blood pressure medication. I need to get Amazon to send me a pill pack. Right? <laughs> All right, guys. Good deal. Guys, great, great work today. Um, I, I, hopefully, we covered a lot. I know it is a lot, um, but I will post this recording right now. Great job, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend.